Hi folks. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me. You are always most welcome. Well today, something really special. Check this out. Now, there's a reason that I selected this for review. Because when I recently did the reviews from ICM of the Bronco and particularly on the recent 135th scale Cobra, two or three of you popped up and said, it's a fantastic kit that, but just wish it was at 48 scale, it's a bit big. My wish is your command. And I spoke to ICM and they said, ah, but we have this, but we have a way of cheating to give your viewers what they want. So what they have done, in fact, is we have got a really nice set here called Forward Base. A bit of a strange title. I think they would have been better calling it Vietnam Forward Air Base or something like that. Um, because it's clearly a Vietnam War scene you can create. It comes with figures, support figures, both for the helicopter. Everything you see on that artwork is included in the box. So we've got the ICM, um, what do they call it? US Helicopter Crew, Vietnam War, and US Pilots and Ground Crew, Vietnam War. But what they've done, they haven't retooled or created a new Cobra. They've actually included the special hobby 48 scale Cobra. Um, and it's the uh, the one G version. So this this is a kit that was quite well received. And of course, if ICM can partner with someone like Special Hobby and Czech Republic, you know, CMK, um, you kind of there's no reason to tool again and do and you know reinvent the wheel. So this this should work together beautifully, and it's it's got all the hallmarks. This and I'll put this in your mind straight away with a bit of Inception here. Plant a seed; it'll never go away. What about this for a Christmas gift for somebody? Or for you, more importantly. Tell your wives, you know, mums, brothers, sisters, any relations whatsoever that you want one of these Christmas. Because I'll tell you what, this struck me straight away. I thought this would make a great Christmas gift for somebody. Brilliant. Nice big box. Let me show you more. So it's kit number 48303. On the side we have got... The, everything that's in the box, as I say, which is quite a lot. So we've got the uh, the Cobra and its crew, which are basically two kits. So the Cobra crew are in fact ICM's figures. We've got the Cobra, which is the special hobby I've mentioned. And then on the other side, we've got the uh, ICM 48 AV-10A Bronco and ICM's uh, US Pilots and Ground Crew. So you have got quite a lot of stuff in this box. So this review, I've done a couple of reviews recently that for ICM that were quite short. This will not be short, okay? So pull up a chair, get yourself a, open a beer, some crisps or whatever, some chips, whatever it is you prefer. Let's have a look at what's inside. Oh, we've got a, a lovely writer. Here we go. It's not be short either. Right, the intense nature of the fighting in Vietnam required a quick response from the aviation, which was involved in the direct support of troops on the ground. The Bronco light attack aircraft and the AH-1G attack helicopter fully met these requirements. Thus, the Bronco planes in a certain period of the war were able to reduce the time of approach to the combat zone to just five minutes. And in many ways this was possible due to the location of the airfields near the forward areas where hostilities were being conducted. Airfields thus became advanced bases for strike aircraft. Initially, the OV-10A Bronco was used as a surveillance and guidance aircraft spotter plane. But the lack of strong air defence by the, by the enemy for some time allowed them to use them as light attack aircraft. At the same time, the planes were inferior in manoeuvre and accuracy of the impression of targets to the helicopters, which in turn could be based at the same airfield as the Bronco. This was the case, for example, with the airbase at Da Nang. Also, the OV-10A equipped VAL-4 Black Pony Squadron was based at the same air airfield with their attack helicopters. Amongst the helicopters they were using was the 1G Huey Cobra attack helicopter, which proved themselves in Vietnam very well. Demonstrating excellent survi survivability, they also had very high firepower. It was not for nothing that the term air artillery was born in relation to these attack helicopters. Yes, 
and it says this kit has got 242 parts. It's quite a few parts, isn't it? Right, okay, let's have a look at what we've got then. Now, bear with me, because we know we always have this um, challenge to get into the, uh, the very well protected, excellent, not complaining, excellent packaging that ICM have. One of the best kit manufacturers for packaging their kits, I think. They have this box within a box system, which really does give us the kit arriving in great condition, usually. <laughs> and of course, I have got my gloves, so I should be able to tackle this with relative ease. I've heard that before. This is one of those tight ones, so beware. But I have got the grip, so I should be able to get in. Here we go. Just got to prise it, but they, they can be really tricky. If you've got greasy fingers, you'd have no chance of getting in here, I can assure you. Right. <clears throat> It's just such a tight fit, you can't really get it going. And we've seen many people, me included, have this fun in the past. Slap this side going on will be alright. It's quite an entertainment, isn't it? It's like watching a party trick. Uh, there we go, it's coming, it's coming slowly. Just, just grips all the way to the top. And if you haven't got the gloves, frankly, you're really going to struggle. I've seen several modelers trying to get into these with live unboxings, and it becomes quite amusing. And this is going that way, isn't it? There we are. Nearly there. Just going to easy it bit by bit by bit. <laughs> this is the fun of ICM, but at least you can get around in one piece. Which is what we really want, isn't it? Right, I think we're nearly there. I can just get my fingers under there. He says. It's really tight, this one. Usually tight, even by their standards. It's gone down on the other side. One side goes up, the other goes down. That's the problem. We've got to try and ease it at the same time. Uh -huh. Talk amongst yourselves. I fight. That's a good job I've not been drinking. Come on. It goes down as soon as you get one. One side go, the other one drops. Right, I think the thing to do is put it on its side, like, there we go. We're in, <laughs> we're in. Well, I've had fights on, uh, I've done this before and had fights on camera, but that's the toughest one I see and the biggest challenge they give me yet. Anyway, we're in. Thank goodness. Right, so, one bag of special hobby. Tap one bag of ICM Bronco, one bag of ICM, I think that's the American Pilots, and no, yeah, that's the helicopter parts, I think, and then, oh, these figures look really nice, I've got to tell you. I, 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 I like the 48 scale figures of theirs the best, actually. Right, there we go, so forward base, there's like, oh, look at this, it comes with like a, like a book. I think that's cool. For treat. This is what I'm saying about it. It's like a nice gift for somebody. Look at this. Instructions for forward base. It was worth the fight to get in. I think this is going to be a real corker. So we've got, look at that, it's like a folder. So, well, this is a bit better than we get from <laughs> Great Wall Hobby, isn't it? So we've got all the instructions all put together in this folder. We've got our Bronco instructions and then we've got our, our forward base instructions. So let's just take it out of the folder. Isn't that nice? That is cool. Well done, ICM. On the back, you've got the pictures of the helicopters, the pilots, the Bronco, and the Vietnam War American Vietnam pilots. <coughs> right, so this could take a long time. So, what I'm going to do, I think, is be methodical here, otherwise, we're going to get lost. I think what we will do is we will finish with the, the figures. Spanish flag falling over there. Um, finish with the figures, and I think we'll start with the helicopter, which is a special hobby. But of course, first and foremost, we need to have a look at these instructions. Now, this is going to take a while, so as I said, let's stick around really. Um, I would just say that once again, there. <laughs> Their instructions for assembling these pilot figures are, they don't really show you how they go together, they just show an assembled figure. Now, yeah, we can work it out, but um, yeah, okay. 
not the end of the world, but it's just not the best way of depicting it, I think. So these are the um, US pilots, is that right? Yeah, US pilots and ground personnel. Uh, and it basically just shows the sprue map on one side with your parts and your colour callouts. And then on the other side we've got the figures as I say, so yeah. Here we go. Ground crew and then the pilots themselves. So this is for the aeroplane, so that's one. So I'll put that there. And likewise we've got the uh, this is the helicopter crew and we've got a real, like a, is that a colonel? Looks like Robert Duval from Apocalypse Now, this one, doesn't it? Oh yeah, that looks like Robert Duval, all right. Uh, he's going to say, Charlie, don't surf. That's what he's going to say. Uh, <laughs> and then we've got some uh, ground crew, chopper ground crew, it looks like. And then we've got chopper pilots here. Very nicely done. Same thing again, shows the spoon map. Then we've got... Then we've got the Bronco. I said the Bronco. Well, I've already reviewed this kit, the Bronco, so I'm probably going to sort of skip over this very, very quickly indeed because I've already done a review of it. Uh, and I, I have the kit, and you can, I'll put a link in. Um, I'll, I'll put a link at the end to the Bronco review so you can actually look at that separately just to try and cut down the times it's going to take. Uh, but we've got some very beautiful, um, what they call them, the Black Ponies, they call them, didn't they? And here are the Black Pony decals for the uh, the Bronco OV10A. You've got all your nice instrument panel detail there in decal form. Black Ponies. You've got shark's mouth. Look at that. Very very cool. That's very very good. And then you've got a significant, proper significant instruction book here for the Bronco. Uh, and it goes into all the technical detail, which we won't, we won't dwell on today, because, um, as I say, uh, there's a separate uh, review on this uh, that's already done. So it would be really jet replicating what I've done already. So I think we'll skip across the Bronco, uh, which I think I gave 9.5 out of 10 for. And it's got a great number of munitions here as well. Comes with a whole host of weapons. Yeah, I remember those. The snake eye bombs and all sorts here. Fantastic. Yes, yeah, Snake Eye Mark 82, Snake, Snake Eye Mark 81, Mark 81 low drag version, Mark 82 low drag version, and these are like a Zuni rocket type of thing. Um, anyway, we, we've already done the review on this, so I shall move on and not do the Bronco. I think we'll focus on the chopper, because we haven't seen that kit before in this scale. So we'll move that along. And then we will cut this down to a, a sort of more... I'll just give us a little bit more of a, a bite size video length that hasn't got everybody going to sleep. And I don't want to review a kit that I've done already. I think that would be crazy. But I just say to you now that the Bronco is a beautiful kit. Absolutely. I was thrilled to bits when I saw it. Uh, we've got a loose piece of uh, rocket, it looks like, here. It seems to have escaped from one of the uh, bags. Anyway, we'll, we'll address that. But yeah, the Bronco is superb. I'm sure that somebody's going to ask me what this costs. <coughs> so I'm just going to check that, actually, this set, very, very quickly. Just give me a moment. Um, I shall have a look, give you an idea how much money they're asking for it. So it's ICM forward, peace. And they are, most retailers are going to be there or thereabouts, I think. Let's have a look at what sort of prices have we got. Um, sixty-eight pound is coming up. Seventy. Mm, what's kinky? That's a bit. Uh, eBay. It's on eBay at. It's around about seventy, eighty pound mark basically. And just see if the eBay one comes up. Because there is one there showing. It says. In your own time. Uh, you know. Very slow. There we go. Okay, sixty-four pounds. Sixty. So it's, it's, it seems to be between sixty-five and eighty pounds. Between sixty-five and eighty pounds, depending on where you shop it, shop for it, uh, which may or may not include uh, your shipping. So, not a cheap kit, but you're getting a lot. You're getting four kits basically. You're getting two different kits that are. 
figures and you get a helicopter and of course you get the Bronco. So I'm going to fo focus on, we've got the forward base uh, and it says forward base and it talks about, about the Cobra which is kind of strange. <laughs> strange the way they've laid it out, that's all. So Cobra, it says, fuselage length was dum -dum -dum, 13 and a half metres, height of 4 metres, takeoff weight 4.2 tonnes. Mm, it's not, not heavy is it? Um, power plant is a Lycoming turbocharged T53. Maximum speed 282 Ks, so what's that? 160 miles an hour, 170 miles an hour, it's not, it's not slow is it? It's the shift. Maximum ceiling 3,500 feet and armament 7.62 multi barrel minigun, which I think was on the side. And then 40 millimeter grenade launcher, six barreled and 20 millimeter cannons and rockets. Wow, okay, so so this is the one we're going to really focus in on today. So let's start off by look at, look at these decals, these are brilliant, very apocalypse now like straight away. We have got, and remember, this is the um, does it say where it's made? This is actually made in the Czech Republic. Whether the decals are, I'm not sure, but probably, probably. So you've got your instrumentation decals at the top. And then you've got some, quite a few stencils of course, and you've got some shark's mouth. Two lots of shark's mouth here. And then look at that, you've got those, like Jolly Roger, pirate flag. Very like, you know, Apocalypse Now. Different names, you've got Hulk, Cindy, Cindy Ann. Another different style of shark's mouth. Quite, quite nice decals there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm liking that straight away. So in a way, this is the answer to the dreams of one or two of you that were saying, "Oh, uh, yeah, it's very nice, Peter, but you know, we'd like to see a, we'd like to see a cobra that's at uh, 148." Well, here it is. <laughs> so let's pop that there. Let's have a look at what we got. I think I'm about to move the back. It's just a bit too big in the way here. So if you'll bear with me. Bear with me just a second. I think that at the end of this review, I'm going to be recommending this kit because you just seem to get a lot for your bunny, really. You're getting complete, almost a complete diorama set, aren't you? you know? Anyway, we'll look at the instructions first, in the best way. So, have a look. So we've got, um, there's obviously different variants for the kit because we've got uh, this sprue map here and there's quite a few areas that are blanked out and we're not going to use uh, including one of the uh, one of the window sets interestingly probably for a different version like an H perhaps and then going straight into it you're going to build up your cockpit so of course this is the tandem style cockpit that we have where the pilot actually sits at the back and it's the gunner and navigator chap sort of spotter and navigator weapons officer at the front and then we've got our um, instrumentation going in we're completely sort of shrouding shielding sun shield around it that's going to go in um, for the pilot that's the, the big one is for the pilot and the small one is for the weapons guy at the front and then you're building up your uh, rather nice looking seats it has to be said there's quite a few elements to that they look quite comfy, don't they? So they're going in, dropping into the cockpit tub there. Then we've got a few holes to drill in the side of the fuselage, here and there. Um, for variant two, you have to drill the holes and not for variant one. So that's, I think it's variant two, it's carrying more, more stuff down the side, isn't it? Uh, then we've got like the, um, is it the swash plate that's going in here at the bottom, uh, the base for the rotor. You've got your exhaust going in, you're going to bring the two sides of the cockpit, uh, fuselage together, completely your engine exit, and it reminds you to put weight in the nose, interestingly, but it doesn't tell you how much, which is kind of a hmm, bit, bit odd. It, it doesn't make it clear it is weight, but I'm, I'm sure that's what they mean. Then we've got some armour plating, it looks like, going in the sides, um, because obviously they, did, they quickly need, realised they needed to, to beef these up to protect the pilot and the gunner. Um, armour plate going in there, then you've got the uh, the underside of the fuselage 
uh, base plate going underneath. Then we've got our sort of, um, I don't know whether you call them sponsons or side wings really, but you know, they've got these like uh, protrusions at the side like a wing, it adds a bit of lift I think, and then they hang a lot of weapons off it, don't they? So, yeah, there's, um, there's a pod going in there, some description. Uh, pom, pom, pom. Just trying to understand that pod, what, where that goes. So that, that definitely goes underneath. Almost looks like a fuel tank. Then you've got your exhaust uh, ring going on the back. And then you've got these, um, these left and right side winglets or sponsons as I call them. And you've got your uh, rotary cannon and grenade launcher underneath, uh, which is in this little rotating electric turret, which is remotely operated by the gunner at the front. You've got your nose going on there. You've got uh, there's a big GAU cannon. Uh, it might even be the Vulcan cannon. It's the electric rotary cannon on the side. Um, like a skid protector underneath. Then you're putting in your actual skids underneath. The main fuselage, tail rotor going on here, uh, tail rotor, one version it's on one side and one other version it's on the opposite side interestingly, very interesting, okay. Uh, and then you've got your your basic uh, drive shaft up from the, uh, from the engine to the rotors coming in, you're building them your rotors, you can see there you've got these, um, they're obviously moulded in these uh, weights, these uh, the balance weights that are on the, the base of the blades and then you've got your, your swash plate arrangement that alters the pitch of the blades going in there and then you've got, you're going to attach that uh, rotor assembly and uh, that's going to go on there uh, and then you've got the, uh, the pitch control rods here going in, that's what it should look like which is quite a helpful photograph then you've got your, I think it's a gun sight here, that's going in on the, the, it's the canopy and that's bringing in the canopies and the side windows here. Um, you've also got, it looks like a window that, that can be wedged open, which has a stay on it. Uh, it's the pilot entry window in fact, isn't it, for them to get in and out. Same on the opposite side. And then we've got some wheels which are going to go on the, the skid gear underneath. So they can obviously trolley it around on the airfield then. Uh, and then you've got the towing system. So this is very like the the bigger scale helicopter that ICM produced, the actual... It's almost like they've got the concept from the special hobby kit, isn't it? Then you've got some masks which you need to make up yourself. I do wish ICM would throw masks in. So they're not another manufacturer that needs to change in the future, I think, in that respect, because I think that everybody wants a mask set. And it's quite a lot of work in making up your own. It's just a bit inconvenient. Uh, and then you've got your weapons, so you've got these like a Zuni rocket style pods going on and you've got various loadout options here and showing the relative positions and how they go on underneath those uh, you know, the pods go on underneath the uh, the winglets on the side and then we get into the colour call out, so I'm a bit too zoomed for this and we're going to zoom out a little bit Sorry, there we go. That's it. There we can see it. So here's your helicopter. Look how slender the helicopter is. It's so narrow, isn't it? Remarkable. Uh, and then you've got the side view, and this is the first cavalry division at Pork Vin, summer of 1970. Second option when you've got Shark's Mouth is Sindian. First squad of the 9th cavalry at Pork Vin again. And then you can see here it's got the Shark's Mouth on it. And then finally, oh, I've got four options. So we've got Corsair, which is the 1st Cavalry Division. Corsair. This is the one that's got the Jolly Roger skull and crossbones on the side. Reminds us a little bit of Apocalypse Now with uh, Robert Duval. And then finally we've got uh, the 10th Cavalry Division at Cav Plieku, which is autumn of 72, a bit later on. Wow. So... Yeah, I mean, it just, to the eye, looking at the instructions, it does look like a scaled down. This came first, we've got to remember, this kit came first. Uh, I think it's been out now for about, uh, oh, 12, 15 years at least, I think. Was it, was it 98? 
might have been even at the it might be twenty odd years now. Um, and so it's been out a while, and then ICM I think have used it as a sort of a blueprint for their own bigger 35th scale and 32nd scale versions. So let's have a look at it, because that's really the most interesting part of the whole set in terms of something we haven't seen. So this is a special hobbies kit tooling. I don't know if it says on it anywhere. Let's have a little look. <laughs> oh, I've got to say it looks nice. Yeah, I'm not sure about putting it all in one bag. Mm, I'm too happy about that, but anyway. Oh, but the parts look lovely now. My experiences of CMK Special Hobby. Oh, yeah. Made by Special Hobby. It says it on the actual sprue. So there, it leaves us in no doubt. But my experience of them is really excellent because um, I did the, the Revell V2 rocket, the A4 rocket, and it was brilliant. It went together beautifully, to be honest. There were no issues at all with it. Um, very nice kit. So, we'll start with... What's this? Sprue A? Okay, that's a good place to start, isn't it? So let's bring you in and have a look at this. So this is Special Lobby. They're tooling in the Czech Republic. Uh, obviously used by ICM to join their own lovely uh, Bronco. And you can see straight away that you've got lovely, oh, lovely riveting here. Look at this. Yes, they've done a splendid job with that. And it's very consistently done. And it looks very scale-like. It's... Yeah, it just looks right, that does. It just looks right. And then you've got the little winglets here that I mentioned. And the tail rotor winglets as well. And then you've got the actual full rotor in one piece. That's amazing they're doing it in one piece. Complete with its, um, as I mentioned, the, uh, the balance weights that you have on the rotor to make sure it's in perfect balance. Something that they change from time to time as needed. We have to check the balance. Balance on the helicopter is on the rotor blades is absolutely everything for it to fly well and safely. So then we've got the underside here of the actual fuselage. That's a nice sprue that. Yeah, I thought this was going to be good. I think this is a very wise decision that ICM have made in partnering up with such a good company. And obviously for them, relatively local in the Czech Republic, it's not too far from Ukraine, obviously. Here's the next one. So this is Sprue N. This is the, uh, it's like the towing dolly for the, uh, uh, the ground handling element of the helicopter with this sort of uh, apparatus for towing it. With the little wheels, they put the little wheels down, they tow it via this towing, towing arms again. Yeah, really nicely moulded parts there. Beautifully done. Look at that. Very, very nice indeed. Like that. Then we've got the tail parts here. So we've got the, uh, again, we've got this beautiful uh, riveting detail. Really sharp. Really nice panel lining. Not sure if that's coming out well or not. You see that? Look at that. That's a beauty. I think this is even better than I was expecting. And I was expecting it to be sort of 8, 9 out of 10. Not just saying that. It's just, there's no flash, is there? Beautiful, lovely finish to all the parts. Look at the tail rotor here. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Wow, instrumentation there. That's a smashing sprue. Very nice indeed. Then we've got this long sprue here. Quite zoom out of this one. Quite a long sprue that's got all the skid parts on it as well, and the the gun turret and the exhaust. So we'll go through them one by one. So we'll start with the gun turret at this end. So this is the uh, remote control. Uh, gun turret, there's two versions, although the G I think has got the twin one. One's a grenade launcher, one's a uh, I think it's 20mm cannon from memory. And then there's a single one, which I think is the is the earlier version. I think the A version. And then you've got this late version. Is that, is that flash? It's not flash, no, it isn't. It's supposed to be like that. And this is that um, directed exhaust, which they use to direct the exhaust up into the rotor blades and so that heat seeking missiles can't lock onto the, the open exhaust. 
but I think that again is uh, it's kind of a later version than the G, so I don't think you actually use those two parts in this version. Then you've got your skids, it's the chopper lands on. You've got two different options here again. You've got a thin skid, thin supports to, that go to the fuselage, or very thick supports that go to the fuselage. And again, it's really, really nicely done. And plenty of detail here, here, the bolts are very nice, that. It's a smashing, uh, excellent sprue. Then we have some of the various weapons, and I think this is where we lost our part, which is now quite gone. We had one go AWOL, didn't we? I think it's come off this sprue. Where did it go? I'll have to come and be found later on anyway. But yeah, you've got these um, various... Uh, oh, that's just come off as well. They clearly don't want to stay on, do they? Okay, that was one of my modelling madness moments. <laughs> so here you've got your uh, rockets, and this is the forward end, which is what the other piece that fell off, so they obviously both fell off in the end. So that's your rocket component sprue. And there's two of those, oh no, sorry, this is like slightly different, beg your pardon, slightly different. Um, here we've got like the Zuni style rocket pod. Somebody tell me they're not actually Zunis, but they're like a pepper pot, aren't they? It's complete with the little tabs, the tabs that you take off to make them live at the back. Then we have more weapons, more pepper pots, okay. Here we go. Aren't those nice though, aren't they? It's beautifully formed, really excellent, made by Special Hobby, excellent. That's very, very nice. So you've got multiple rocket launch uh, pod there. Then this is the this is like the Vulcan cannon that we talked about, the GAU, I think. Yeah, rotating cannon, electric cannon, that's the one for sure. I mean this thing packs a lot of firepower, doesn't it? Good lord, if it carries all this stuff. It's like a flying tank, this is what they used to call it, isn't it? The flying tank. And here we go. Look at this, there you go, rotating barrel, multi-barrel electric cannon. What a monster, eh? And I think this one goes in the, the pod. Still can't quite work out if that's a spare fuel tank or not. Oops. But that's certainly the uh, that's certainly the cannon. Look at that! Isn't that nice? Isn't that a belter? Fantastic! Yeah, I knew that Special Hobby was going to do a good job here, but exceeding even my expectations here. Right, then we've got a thin long sprue with lots of small parts in it. Um, and there's all sorts of little brackets and supports and you got the little pylons for the weapons on the winglets here. Um, not sure if that is shot. Not sure if that is another cannon. Is that a machine gun, multi-barrel machine gun. Yeah, it's the one that pops out of the turret, isn't it? For sure. And then you've got, I think this is the one that's the gun barrel for the grenade launcher, I think. So, it's nice. Again, there's no flash here. It's very, very beautifully done. And then, on the grey sprue, last but not least, we've got all the cockpit parts. So, the tub and the back firewall there. Bulkhead. We've got chopper seats. Very, quite, quite detailed, in fairness. Reasonably detailed. Um, and then there's little, little pieces of armour plate that we spoke of that they are fitted in the, in the Cobra. I don't know whether they slide up and down, whether they pull them up. I'm not quite sure if they're fixed. I, th I think that they move up and down so that when they're going into battle, they've got a bit more shoulder protection. I think that's the idea. And you've got the seat squab there. Yeah, beautifully. Then there's the stick, look, for controlling the plane chopper. It's nice. It's very, very detailed. It's a smashing chopper, that. That's exactly what people wanted, isn't it? Well, there you go, folks. Those of you that wanted a 148th Cobra, I can't remember the, the gentleman's name, the first one. I think one chap said it, and then another chap said it. So it's been quite a few that, that felt that the 135th was very beautiful, but a bit on the big side. So I was delighted when uh, I actually asked the question on your behalf, and uh, ICM came back and said, uh, no, we don't do that, but, but we do. We do it via special hobbies reboxing. This is a great solution for everybody, including them. Now, 
We have got two sets of glass here, one of which is not used. I'm just trying to reacquaint myself. I think. I think the one that isn't used is. Yeah, as I thought so. Yeah, it's the one that's got the slight cut off. Um, so as you look at it here, top left is not used. That's a later, different version. Where it's got the uh, the chamfered off corner um, here. That little bit of chamfering there and there. That's not that's not on the one we're going to use. We're going to use the this one over here, the straight cut. Now this is very nice clear parts. I've got to say. Now don't forget, we've got some complex curves going on here. And uh, Special Hobby have made a beautiful job of, of moulding that, so hats off to them, hats off to them. Um, yeah, and again this part, that part isn't used, this one, that particular variant. And then you've got various little lights and uh, light lenses and things like that. Okay, so that goes back in there for safety bring you out so you can see what's going on. This is where I've got to try and find the parts that have all fell off the sprue. But I'll tell you what, this is this is a gem, look okay. here. I mean, it's, you know, six, call it 70 pounds or thereabouts, approximately. You're getting multiple kits, aren't you, for 70 quid, so, yeah. I think there's a lot of value there. I mean, that's this is cheaper than buying an Airfix Buccaneer, and it's not life like it. But I'm just saying, in terms of value, you're getting quite a lot for your money. So I'm just going to put those figures over there for a second. And I'm going to re-acquire these parts here. See if we... Yes, we have got both. It's okay, we've got the parts that we're missing. They are together. I thought they were here, somewhere. Right. It's just going to be a bit tricky getting these in. We've got lots of different shaped, different sized sprues, which are not correlated with anything else, really. Two that are full length, that helps. Then we've got this, this one. And then we've got a whole host of figures that are really good to look at. I think it's going to be quite a joy because I know that ICM's figures are always good. And I believe these are going to be better than ever, possibly, because they're fairly new tool figures that are going to be in the set. Right, are they in? Yes, they're in. Right, so, there's so much of it, it's like a kit that keeps on giving me, just tons of it. So I'm going to just pop that, oh no, I made a mess of it, haven't I? No, I screwed up, as you all probably expected it to be. I've not put that in, one of them is missing. One of our gun balls is missing. There we go, got it in. That's it. Sorted. So, we have got this, I love the way they've done this. They've made an effort, haven't they? ICM have made a real good effort to bring all this together. A nice experience, you know. Uh, putting it in a nice folder, and I say this is why it would make a fantastic gift for somebody. So if you know any modellers, uh, or you, the modeler, would like to have it as a gift, I think you wouldn't be disappointed with this one. Really, you wouldn't. So, last but not least, our figures. And we have got... Dum, dum, dum. This is the... We'll do the US um, chopper pilots first. We're very much with Apocalypse now in mind. Let's see what these are like. So I can see the hat, like Robert Duval wore. Cowboy hat. Like a, it was like a black fedora, wasn't it, really? Like a black felt fedora, is that right? Here it is. Let's have a look at his hat, first of all. There we go. Getting a bit closer. There we are. That's like the Colonel Stroke Major's hat. Look at that. Now look at these figures. Aren't they nice? Now I think that ICM do these, in this scale, best best of all actually. I think they're actually nicer, relatively speaking, 
than they do with the 135ths, which are still very good. But look at this, the sort of sharpness of the figures and the creasing in the clothes. We've got, we've got faces here. There, there. Oops, trying to get the right way up. We keep changing which way up they are, that's the problem. There. They're nice, aren't they? Those are really cool figures. And over on this side, we've got some more. Look at that. Aren't they nice? You've got your chopper pilot with his helmet on. Fantastic. I like the way they've got the sort of sleeves are, like, sleeves are rolled up. They're just beautiful, beautiful figures those are. They look from, you know, my range here. Uh, I'm not seeing them quite as close and big as you are, but to be perfectly frank, look at the hands as well. Look at the hands. Aren't they well done? That's incredible. Absolutely superb figures those. Absolutely superb. This is going to get a good race in this kit. I'll tell you that now. So, that's your US helicopter pilots from the Vietnam War. Going back in there. And then last but not least, we've got the ground crew this is the uh, aircraft pilots and ground crew. They're really nice. Again, beautiful. Look at this. These are fantastic. Yeah, I see them really doing these figures nicely. See that chap with his cap on? It's quite funny because the, uh, the camera is actually recognising that it's, it's focusing on their eyes. It, it recognises that as a face, amazingly. Oh, they're good. They really are something special. And then you've got... A, he's got a, a spanner or a wrench in his hand. Isn't that good as well? Absolutely incredible. The other side, the wrench. <laughs> ah, they're fantastic. They're just sublime, really. And they've got all sorts of little hands and their arms. And what's this one? He's got a screwdriver, the look of it. Looks like he's got a screwdriver in his hand, this one. Fabulous. And you've got another. Oh, sorry, okay, sorry. You've got another um, cap, another face. All the various bits of equipment. And there's a parachute there. Parachute. So this is for the Bronco pilots. Remember. Um, they're absolutely stunning. Those. They're really nice. Forty-eight scale figures. I think ICM are probably the best 48 scale figures that you can get really. It's certainly in injection moulded plastic anyway, rather than resin, you know. Uh, I don't think anybody actually does it better than they do. Um, oh, lovely. Excellent. So, there we go. So, just remember on top of everything I've shown you that there is an entire uh, OV-10 Bronco as well, uh, which is a 
fantastic model, isn't it? So there's a heck of a lot in that box. It's just uh, absolutely astonishing, really. It's amazing they managed to get it all in one box. Uh, I just noticed that we have got a slightly sh yeah, we need those to be there. Get those um, safely put away. But I just like the whole packaging of it, you know. The only the only criticisms of this kit then for me, I think, it's just that those figures are not they're so perfect the plastic, but they're not really made that much effort with the instructions and how they go together. You know, it shows you've just seen the plastic and there's all those parts, aren't there? There's little bits of equipment um, which are on the sprue. And of those, there's nothing really, it doesn't really show up what, how they carry them or there's not quite enough detail on the figures. That's my only criticism of the whole kit. I think the helicopter, the special hobby helicopter, is stunning and a perfect partner for that lovely Bronco. It's a, this is a find. I'm so glad that I, you know, I only asked for this because it's not new too. It came out, I think, about a year or two ago. Um, but I asked for it because there have been these people requesting uh, to see, you know, will I see them not do it in 48? Well, they have, they have. So if you haven't got the Bronco yet and you fancy that helicopter, just buy this set and get everything. I could have given it a better title. I don't know about forward base. I'm not sure about the uh, title base they've used, but I'm, I'm picking at straws, clutching straws, and just to find something negative. Those, de those um, instructions on the, uh, the figures could be better though. So I'm going to give it nine. I think nine and a half is almost a bit harsh. No, I'm going to say 9.75 out of 10. Because I do think that's a, that will give you months of pleasure, that box. Months of pleasure. And if you're into your figure painting, you know. I mean, you've got one, two, three, four, five. You've got ten figures there with lots of detail to go at. I mean, they'll keep you going for weeks, won't they? You know, fantastic. Beautiful set. One of the best things from ICM as a concept within the box. It's all there. History's there. The quality's there. Very well packaged. Very well presented. What's not to like? So I'm going to go 9.75 out of 10, which is a very high rating. I think that's the highest I've given ICM so far. So close to 10. If we just got some better instructions on those figures, it'd be 10, I think. I think it would. Excellent work, beautiful plastic, including that special hobby chopper. Perfect. Sorted. 9.75 out of 10. Hope you agree with me. Don't forget, um, if you haven't done yet, to subscribe to the channel. It costs you a thing and you can get to see my 630, I think we've got, or thereabouts uh, videos. Um, and of course, you've, if you have subscribed, you must ding the notification bell. Uh, but make sure you ding the all bell that will give you, uh, there are several options and it's definitely all that seems to work best. I'm, I'm being told that feedback from other people. So don't go for personalised or anything like that because then the YouTube algorithm starts picking and choosing what it thinks you are interested in, what it thinks you're not. And that's always dangerous. So if you like what you've seen here, thank you very much for joining us and please come along for the ride and, and see many, many more similar videos in the near future. And we've got lots of interesting kits that I can think of coming up in, in the next uh, sort of six to eight weeks. So please tune in again. In the meantime, thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget to give me a like, a thumbs up. Uh, we rely on our likes and give me a 10 out of 10 with a thumb. Uh, but thanks for joining me. Uh, until I'm, until I'm, I'm back on the channel again in the near future. In the meantime, take care of yourselves. Thank you very much for your time. And thanks a lot and bye for now.